That being said, let's get the money in the bank. By the way, we were joking. Here come the money. AEW earlier, we were joking, right? They had a five match pre show. This paper, this PLE is five matches. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's, That's bad. bad. That's bad. Like, how bad is that, right? Like, AEW did five match pre show. AEW did five match PLE. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right um since we don't only have five matches this won't take us long to get through which is not a bad thing um it's very strange for this match to be the first match we talk about but there's only five matches the only non-title match um it is cody rhodes randy orton and kevin owens taking on the bloodline so it's a koa tonga 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 Loa or Jacob Tattoo. They haven't said us who it is. I'm going to guarantee on SmackDown they tell us, but we're referring to this opposite live before SmackDown. Um, I don't know if Jacob Tattoo can get into Canada. That's the only reason I say that. I don't know if he's allowed into Canada. Um, because of the is felonies. Because of his, uh, his, his felonies. Background? Um, I, I just said what it was. You, you can dance around it. I'm going to say blade out what I'm talking about. Um, he has felonies on his record. So I'm not sure if he can go into Canada. Um, so I'm expecting this to be Solo and the Tongans. So the other thing, Sal, I said it to you right after SmackDown, so you don't watch SmackDown Live. Um, I'm in a fucking hotel. I'm, I'm at Great Wolf Lodge. CJ, by the way, uh, we're watching SmackDown. I felt bad for anyone that was walking past our room during the last 10 minutes of SmackDown as we're, the three of us are screaming at the TV, <laughs> getting into the segment with the bloodline and Heyman and everything else. Like, we were getting so into this fucking segment. Like, <laughs> everyone walking past us is like, what the hell's going on in there? You guys scream like, holy shit. We were having so much fun watching this segment because we were so into it. We were so fucking into it. But um, when Paul Heyman said you, I, when, by the way, Souls of Koa in the garden saying acknowledge me one of the biggest heat things I've ever seen. Oh. Holy shit, that crowd was pissed at him for saying oh, that. Yeah. Um, so that was one moment. And then he asked everyone to acknowledge him. And when Paul Heyman said, I acknowledge you are not my tribal chief. Oh my god, that place erupted for that moment. Um, so a little behind the scenes on this, by the way. Apparently, Paul Heyman, he looked disheveled and tired. He legitimately did not sleep the night before for the look. Oh. He decided I'm I'm gonna do this. I'm going to do this right. I am not sleeping, and I'm gonna look as disheveled as fucking possible for this segment. Okay. And he did. He did a great job. Um it's, but it gets a, a moment spike, gets shield bombed through a table. Uh by take a fat was insane. Um I love it. I love this whole thing. I can't wait for Roman to return because that pop is going to be fucking insane. So it's KO, Cody, oh, KO, Cody, and Orton versus the Bloodline. I don't see, I can't see the Bloodline losing this match. They, they can't lose this match after fucking destroying Paul Heyman. Sal, right? Well, Bloodline wouldn't, but Bloodline 2.0 would. You're really not going to have Cody Rhodes lose because fuck Cody Rhodes. But at the same time, you, don't, you can just have Orton get pinned. <laughs> True. Uh, I mean, Orton obviously can get pinned. He got pinned before. It's not the end of the world anymore with him. Right. And by the way, hang on. Fuck Cody Rhodes. There you go. <laughs> Haven't needed that in a few weeks. <laughs> Haven't needed one in a few weeks. It wasn't on the main soundboard. I didn't move it over. Um, <laughs> and now, is it is it me... Because I don't necessarily watch SmackDown, but I'll see like little clips here and there. But is it me or is this Bloodline 2.0 thing just like being very forced? It started that way. But I will admit this past Friday was the first time I'm like, okay, this actually could work. Like this okay. was the first week where I actually watched it. I'm like, if they keep doing shit like this and they actually go on as unhinged as they're being promoted this could work so do you see like roman eventually coming back as like a face yeah oh fuck yeah, yeah. the crowd wants him the crowd wants him back like if that if roman reign music hit on friday it would have been the biggest pop of the fucking year let's be honest here if that music hit on in the garden on friday you know it was it would have been unbelievable i expect him that when he, when he does return that pop's gonna be unreal 
and I and we were talking about this. I think you know, last week. I'm not even sure what we're talking about. This. We do as many shows, and we haven't been together in months. So I'm not even sure when we talked about it. But um, I see war games happening with Roman and um, the USO reuniting. I heard some people say you should bring Sammy in and reunite the four of them, and then you have them against the bloodline of war games. Well, but that would be the return of the Rock. Okay, but what about <laughs> what about the first new SmackDown episode on USA? Oh, that would be cool too. Like that's in what is that October? That'd be interesting too. That would be that would be the show where I bring Roman back. Right, that'd be the show you do it. Yeah. You know? Um, they, and that's a good I forgot about that. That's a good call. It's a very good call because that would be the show I'd bring Roman back, promote him back for that show, and then you set up the virus series from there. Yes, that's a great idea. It's a great move. <laughs> um, Dad, any thoughts on this before we move on? Um, I think the new bloodline could take a little bit of a loss right now, but I basically see. What's going to happen is going to be an old contest between the two teams because they're going to basically try to beat the shit out of each other, and uh, the referee's going to toss it out. So that way, no one loses, no one wins. See, the and problem it still with that continues. Here's the problem with that logic, and I understand yeah. what you're saying. Okay, I think it that would work if this wasn't a five match show. If this was, if this was like a normal, like if this is like a normal show, an, an old show where there was like ten matches and. You could do a six man tag and throw it away. The problem is it's only a five match show. And your WWE champion's in the match. I don't know if you do that. If you do something like that, I can see them sending out Nick Aldis and making it to a street fight. Right. Which I'm yeah. very surprised is already not a street fight, honestly. I'm very surprised it's not already. That it may <laughs> happen. It may turn into one. I mean, again, we're not we're doing it before the final SmackDown. So yeah. they might do that. We don't know. So, we'll find out. Because I mean from from what storyline goes is you want that family feud to happen between the two different bloodlines and it will happen and i'm telling you when it does wow you're gonna have the roof blowing off whatever venue it's gonna be at and you're gonna have the crowd go completely totally insane yeah i don't think you realize Sal, how big it's gonna be doing when roman returns like it's gonna be insane that reaction, especially if he comes to save somebody. Like, but I said to Mandy, Paul cannot come back until Roman comes back. Paul yeah. not return until Roman comes back. Paul has to bring come out with Roman. That's how you bring Paul back. You know, <laughs> that's the word going around when Paul it. returns. He's bringing Roman. Yeah, it's the only way you do it. And then, like I said, at War Games, that's when the Rock returns and helps the new Bloodline win. And then you're setting up. You can still, and then you finally get to rock and Roman at at, at WrestleMania. There you oh. go. Finally get to that match a year later. You finally get to because no one has there's no titles in the line. And no one's gonna piss it back because everyone wants to see it. Then everyone wanna want to see it. Then although for those and, of, I still have we have not watched the um, WWE WrestleMania documentary on YouTube yet. We're gonna all probably gonna watch it tonight. I just haven't had a chance to watch. I didn't have a chance to watch it yesterday. So do plan on watching it tonight. So the other thing too is. It's more really good. I heard it's actually really, really good. Yeah, I was having to watch it. The other thing was more family members are going to be introduced into the new bloodline. I'm still waiting for um Hikaleo to debut. I'm still waiting for that. Uh, that may not be too much longer. So, um, all right, let's move on. WWE Intercontinental Championship. This match should be interesting. Sami Zayn in defending again. Braun Breaker with the awful theme music. Um. I, I love the NXT music. Cannot stand his main roster music. Cannot stand it. But um, this is interesting to me. I'm not sure what to do here. I'm very torn in the middle here with this match. Because Common Sense says Braun Breaker is a fucking beast. You put the belt on Braun Breaker right away. Uh -huh. But Sammy is the kind of character you can beat the living shit out of and he'll still win. So I don't know what to do here. Um, Dad, what do you think? It's it, it's difficult because uh, you're looking at Sammy, who had the big win, got the belt, and the crowd is behind him 100%. And you get the badass Broad Breaker, who basically is, is 
plays Mr. Badass Heel very well. Uh, you know, it's tough. I mean, I don't know if they have other plans for Braun at this time. And maybe putting a belt on Braun will basically kind of give him more momentum going up to looking for something bigger and better. So what do you think? Um, I feel like it would make sense for Braun Breaker to win, especially if you're trying to get him to be this big monster guy. You know what I mean? It would be really bad for him to lose in this situation. True. <sighs> Sammy doesn't need the belt. He doesn't actually need it. I, I think Braun might need the belt right now. So what's the belt on Braun Breaker? See what happens. See what he does. I mean, yeah. I got to admit, I'll start the theme music. I think he's doing a great job. I mean, I think he's doing a great job just being the singular, I'm a badass, don't give a fuck, I'm not exactly the most intelligent person in the world, but it doesn't matter because he's a fucking badass. So I think that's a great character. Um, as Dad walks away from the frame, I want to move on. We have money in the bank so, honor so match. Just, <laughs> so disgusted he walked out. I know, seriously, what the hell? Um, what the hell happened there? What? <laughs> Where are you? Anyway, um, any depending on our matches, we have two, we obviously have the two matches. Let's start with the uh, women. We have Eo Sky, Chelsea Green, Violet, Violet Valkyria, um, it's Tippy Time, Naomi, and Zoe Stark. I am torn between two people. I've been saying since fucking January, and I mean January at the Rumble, that Tiffany Stratton was winning money in the bank. I said this in January, so yeah. I can't go against what I said then. I can't. But, but I will throw in a little wrinkle. My dark horse is Chelsea Green. And the reason I say that, because I think it'd be fucking hilarious for her to be running around the money in the bank. I think it'd be fucking great television for her to be doing that. <laughs> um, but at the same time, I really want to see a bedazzle money in the bank case. So, um, <laughs> um, I would actually throw out a theory here. And because CJ actually asked my opinion on this yesterday. And I said, well, here's my prediction. If you went to money in the bank, Bailey and Nia happen at SummerSlam. Um, you're not watching SmackDown right now, Seth, but um, Tiffy is in a line herself with Nia. I like the princess and the queen thing. She's trying to oh, do it cool. together. And if she's money in the bank, hanging out with Nia, I can see her uh, being the champion by the end of SummerSlam because Nia will be the living shit out of Bailey. Bailey will still retain. Tiffy will then cash in and become champion. At right. That's how I see it personally. That's why I'm picking Tiffy. But again, my dark horse is Chelsea. Um, Sal, what do you think? I was thinking Tiffany Stratton, um, just with all the momentum that she has. But now that you mentioned Chelsea Green, <laughs> I kind of want to see that happen. Um, and her many, many failed attempts to try to cash in. But her losing the money back is still going to be funny. Either way, anything yeah. with this is fantastic. Her Chelsea being this bad makes it great for me. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> So, I mean, I I think it's going to be Tiffany Stratton, but I wouldn't mind if it was Chelsea Green. Yeah, I just had to throw it out there because Mandy brought it up and it's been in my brain ever since she brought it up to me. And I'm like, that's fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Um, Dad? I'm going to go with Lyra Vicaria. Interesting. It's been an interesting fact. Only because I think this would give her the boost that she would need and go after a women's title and I don't think she's gonna go after Bailey's. Oh are you I, I, I can see her going after Liv or Rhea, whoever the hell the champion is on Raw by the time we get through things. Yeah, I, I could see Lyra and and Liv doing it, tearing it up and she's winning the belt and then Mimi comes back and she wants her belt. Well we'll see how that works out. Um and we want within the men we have Jay Uso. Carmelo Hayes, Andrade for some reason, Chad Gable, L.A. Knight, and Drew McIntyre. So I'm going to go through this real fast. This is how I'm looking at this. Um, I see, see I, I see somebody, somebody on a podcast on the tour. I don't remember what podcast it was. I listen to a lot of shows. I'm not sure which one said it. But I heard a great comparison of Drew McIntyre and CM Punk being like um, Charlie Brown and Lina and Lucy with the, with the football. Yeah. Where every single time Drew goes oh, over, uh, CM Punk interferes. And crosses him. That, that's a perfect comparison. I cracked up laughing when I heard it. So I had to bring it up on the air. 
So oh I, my god! I see CM Punk coming in and interfering and costing through the through, through the Money in the Bank. Um, LA Knight is in a feud with um, Logan Paul, so that's obviously not going to happen here. Um, Chad Gable, I can totally see being canceled up by the Wyatt Six, so that <laughs> leaves Jay Uso, Carmelo, and Andrade. I still don't know why Andrade is in this match. Um, so I guess Jay Uso wins this. I guess this by possible elimination. Um. But I'm not sure. So, what do you think? Um, LA Knight. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, I'll take that. I'm not gonna complain. I'm definitely not gonna bitch and complain that LA Knight wins this. <laughs> um, any reason? Um, I mean, he's got all this momentum right now. He's got the crowd behind him. How 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 crazy do you think that crowd will be if he's? going to potentially be the new world champion. That would be pretty painful. And what's fun about the Money in the Bank now is because Roman's no longer holding a belt, we don't know what's going to happen now. Like when freaking Austin Theory was fucking running the bank, you knew he wasn't going to beat Roman. Right. But you didn't see anybody in this match in any shape or form beating Cody or Damian Priest or even Seth Rollins or Drew McIntyre or Gunther or any of them. You can see that happening. Like it's not that far-fetched. Right. All right. So I like that. It makes it more interesting. Um, the only reason I don't see it is because they are setting up an LA Knight and um, Logan at SummerSlam for the U.S. in Cleveland. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I, I do love that idea. I love that pick, though. Uh, Dad? At first, I was going to go with Jay to basically take it and win. And then I'm thinking to myself, okay, Jay gets it. What does he want to do? What belt will he? Will he go after Cody's belt because he and Cody are friends, or will he take the other belt? I mean, I, then that's the whole thing. But then a thought came into my head: is what if Andrade wins it and he challenges Sami Zayn for his belt? That would be a waste, in my personal opinion. I think you shouldn't go after mid card titles. Personally, I think Austin Theory wasted his by going after mid card title. Um, what's my personal opinion? This should be for a world title. So uh, that's just that's how it always should be. That's how it should have been to begin with. That's my personal opinion. I know, but when they made it for, you know, any title, that's just. I think they've been emphasizing the world title again, this time around. They've been emphasizing it this time. Okay. Like, hopefully that means something. You know what I mean? I really hope that means something. I I would think that would be probably be the best shot. Is then that the person that's holding it would get that, it's kind of like that golden ticket moment where okay, this is it, and I'm going for the big one. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that, that that's what's going to happen. So if that's the case, like I said, okay, now Jay's got some thinking to do. Does he want to go against Cody? Does he want to go against whoever wins Damian Priest? You know, I mean, it's a tough decision, but I think with the, the momentum that Jay's got, I'd see him basically winning the case. Okay. Um, This might be the only opportunity we're going to get to talk about this stuff. So, um. Any opinion on the Wyatt Six as uh, a thing that's been going on? I'm not going to lie. And we didn't have we to talk about it on the show because we didn't talk about it last week because I didn't want to bring WWE stuff with John here. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by this whole thing. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what we're doing at all at this point. But I'm very intrigued by it. Um, one thing I will say, the massacre was nuts. The massacre was crazy. I still love the fact that Chad Gable's wrestling in a Money in the Bank match after being shot in the head. Um, it gets hysterical to me. <laughs> makes me laugh every time. It was just a flesh wound. Um, <laughs> um, that's very funny. But I love the, the VHS tapes. I think it's hysterical. Um, Sal, I think you were not watching Raw that night. Um, I think it was Stanley Cup Final Night. I think it was Stanley Cup Game 7 night when they had the um, first VHS tape. Yeah. And the hilariousness of Cole having to explain what a VHS tape was was one of the funniest things I've seen in a long, long time. <laughs> you had to explain it because it really was like, I, I for those younger audiences, this is a VHS tape. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these in years. Like, why can't call me an old man holding a tape, baby? You laugh. put it in the front of, of your, yeah. yeah well, no, was... My favorite part was, I was like, everyone was thinking the same thing. Who has a VCR to play this? Like, who has one? Like, why do we have one in the truck? Like, why do we have one? It was just so funny to me. The it's a backup. 
But it was just very funny to me. Then we have a VHS, a VHS tape in the high tech WWE product truck. <laughs> like, it's just ridiculous. But I'm, I'm, I'm I sorry. Really, I was willing to go with it because of how ridiculous it was. I'm totally willing to go with well, it. They, like, have a, they have a v- VCR in the truck because they made a VHS tape of Ric Flair's uh, eventual passing tribute video a long time ago. And they didn't want to convert it to digital, so they're gonna just pop in a VHS tape when the day happens. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I I I I I love their vignettes for two weeks in a row. It's on VHS. I know, I know, but I know what I love. All jokes aside, VHS tapes, figuring out the VCR thing. By the way, Pat McAfee has not been on the show in the last two weeks. Valid, valid reasons. His father-in-law passed away right before Raw last week, right? Unexpectedly, so like that's why he hasn't been on the show the last week. Completely valid, but I, the crazy part is that they were setting up the Wyatt Six to be the, to give that VHS tape to Pat the first time because they were teasing stuff on his show to set it up, and then he had to miss the show, so they had to find a way to get this tape to Cole. Even though it was supposed to go to Pat. Like it was like a whole thing they had to do to get around the fact that Pat wasn't there. So um but like, I guess Cole give Michael Cole some credit for doing Raw by himself last week. Like when he was doing the show by himself because he didn't have anybody because Miz was there, but Miz was just being Miz. So Cole pretty much did all of Raw by himself last week. <laughs> so I give him full credit for that. But um I love the VHS tapes. I love the fact that Bo or I guess Bo, is talking to Uncle Howdy and explaining to us what we're doing and why we're doing this. The fact that they even said, why did they feel like, are you exploiting your brother's death? They actually said that on the air. I'm like, holy shit, I can't believe they actually said that. But um, I'm intrigued. I think this is going to be good. Um, the video, by the way, the interview, is, the interview is actually took place in the Firefly Funhouse. If you see the background, which I thought was really cool detail. Mm-hmm. Um. Sal, your thoughts on the white stick? I mean, you've been iffy about it going in. So now that we're three weeks into this, your thoughts? Yeah, I'm still kind of iffy on it. I'm I'm just over it. It took too long for them to actually show up. I, I, mean, I found out why they did it that way. The day he debuted was the day The Fiend debuted. So they were trying to time it out with The Fiend's debut, anniversary of The Fiend's debut, which okay. is why they did it that way. Meh. Which I understood the reasoning. At least that makes sense to me. And you're right. It did take forever to get there. But like when I found out the reason they did it, I'm like, okay, maybe you should have started the um, QR code a little later then. Yeah. Like if you really and, want to be on that date, like just do the QR code like a little later. And, <laughs> you know, speaking of that, you know, it's just, it's all recycled from before. And I, I don't know. I just, to me, it's just unnecessary. I, I'm, 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 it's not. It's not catching me at all. I just, I have no interest at all, to be honest with you. Oh, fair enough. You're allowed. I mean, as much as you were into The Fiend, that's why I wanted your opinion on this. Because yeah, if you were so into The Fiend when that was going on. I was. I was. And now this is just like, this is this is like Bloodline 2.0. It's just, it, it's not. What would win you over? Like, in this segment, for this, for these, for this group, what would win you over now that we're here, we're doing it? I just. The whole story needs to just be unique, and I don't feel like it's unique. I just feel like it's a recycle. Yeah, fair enough. I like the fact that the, they said it in the video, I think, this week, that they released everyone from the fun house, which is why we now have all the characters, which is interesting to me. That means they brought the characters from Bray's mind to life, which is interesting to me. Like, that kind of stuff is weird and interesting. So I'm intrigued by it to see where it goes. You're right. I, you, I, but like I, they kind of did that already when they had all the puppets in the in the or, Thunderdome or, crowd or whatever. I wonder, I wonder though if this was what they were trying to do next. If this is what the next step was going to be with Bray. Uh huh. Like I wonder, I wonder if this was the next step, and we just never got to it because of Bray, of Bray dying. I wonder if this, if this is supposed to be. That's the question I have. You know. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm intrigued by it. Um, the other topic we'll talk about in the main event it is the World Heavyweight Championship. It is Damian Priest taking on Seth Rollins. Um, first of all, if Seth loses, he can't get another title shot as long as Damian Priest is champion. Um, if Priest loses, he must leave the Judgment Day. And here's the kicker: the winner of this match gets Gunther at SummerSlam. Um, <laughs> hmm. 
<laughs> the King of the Ring, and he automatically gets a ton of match at SummerSlam. That's how it works. So mm. the winner of this match gets Gunther. Um, before we get to all this, because I have to bring it up, because it's been my personal highlight of the show. I know Sal hates every bit of it. I love every second of it. Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio. I'm sorry. This is so proper, and I love every fucking second of it. I'm loving every fucking second of it. Oh, so much fun. I love this oh. so much. <laughs> um, Sal, what's your, your thoughts on this right now? I'm sorry, but Dominic Mysterio, you missed it during Game 7 when Liv gifted the Judgment Day Clubhouse with a whole bunch of stuff. Like the like the um like the PS like a PS5 with the WWE game and all this kind of stuff. And my personal favorite was Tommy Mysterio sitting here with a big plate of fucking chicken nuggets. <laughs> one of the funniest things ever was one of the funniest visuals in a long time. It has been memed ever since. <laughs> um, Sal, go ahead. Um, so. If for real it's gonna be Gunther at SummerSlam, mm -hmm. then it would make sense for Damian Priest to retain and then drop at SummerSlam. Okay. Because I don't see Seth Rollins winning and then just dropping it right away. I just don't see that happening. Unless the plan is for Gunther to look strong, which you really don't need to do that anymore. Uh, but I, I, I feel like Damien should retain. Plus, he kind of needs that boost in beating, you know, a Seth Rollins type of person to kind of solidify and justify his title reign because it's been a little sleepy, in my opinion. I, I like the fact that it's it's in, it's definitely interesting. I mean, I like I like that I have somebody different as champion, though. Like, it's yes. somebody different. And it's not the normal. Him being champion is not normal, which I like. Because we've been wanting something new. <laughs> All been asking for something new for a very, very long time. And we're finally getting it. You know, and everyone's like, take the belt off him, take the belt off him. It's not working. But it's working. It is working. Because people don't want to accept that it's working. Right. <laughs> you know, like, the problem is, it's working because we're talking about it. You know what I mean? If, it was, if you weren't talking about it, then it's not working. But he, I thought he's coming off as a good champion. And the whole storyline with the bloodline is a lot. The Judgment Day is working. Um, by the way, I love I love the fact that you totally brushed over the entire Liv Dom thing. I think that's hysterical to me. You literally just brushed over the entire thing. <laughs> I love the fact you, did. you mean the part where Liv gets bumped and she's on top of Don, straddling him like I just went through the entire thing and I said with the salad he totally no sold me completely. I no sold it. A hundred percent no soul me, and that's absolutely oh. hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Is that a pizza? No, that's oh, yeah, chicken, chicken nuggets. nuggets. Chicken nuggets. chicken nuggets from the raw from game seven. <laughs> Boy, was I craving chicken nuggets after that. Oh my god, that was so damn funny. Um catering at the food truck. Your thoughts on this match, and if you want to bring up the Liv Morgan Don thing, you also can bring that up as how completely regarded. <laughs> you think he had a plate of chicken nuggets because Liv Morgan is a chicken head? <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that. <laughs> he knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I don't know what you're about. That's scary, but I do know exactly what you're talking about. Typical Elmwood Park girl. <laughs> um, that is not Oh, um, it seems like the way the storyline goes that they want to take Damian Priest out of the Judgment Day. But do they know? <laughs> I they they want to and I think they're toying with the idea, but here's the thing. If that happens, then what's left for the judgment day? Except what they got the tag belts. Okay, that's it. Mommy comes back and the whole thing's all in disarray and she has to fix it. No, I think mommy comes back and she wants to kick Liv's ass. I have and I can see. Depending on how they do this, we can have a match. Ooh, all that <laughs> what did you just do? 
So that's the bell. Play it on this. Look, don't worry. Send that to me. I will play it on here. Play whatever you just played. I'll play it clear. I have no idea what you just said. What you just played. Send it to me and I'll play it clear. Um. Anyway, I'm going to say something. I can totally see them doing something where I see priests retaining here. Not leaving Judgment Day here. But I can see him leaving eventually. And I can see them doing a match down the road where it's either Finn and Liv or Dom and Liv versus Rhea and um, Priest. In the world. Right. No, I totally right. get it. I right. don't know when she's coming back. That's the thing. I don't really know when she's coming back. Because I heard SummerSlam. Hopefully that means by Monday she's back. Well, it really up to hyping up SummerSlam because it's only a month away. Um, so there's two events that happened in her life. She got married. Well, she was, and... hurt. she was legitimately hurt, but she was legitimately hurt, which is the reason why she took off the time to begin with. Right. So supposedly she's recovering from the injury, and then I she know. Got but my point is, my point is, I you don't know when she's returning. That was my point. Um... The point was we don't know when she's returning. So I... oh, I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't th- I don't see SummerSlam. I see past that, and then her. Oh, oh you, you gotta give him that hawk too and spit on that. <laughs> the hawk too girl. Damn it, Sal. <laughs> it's Liv Morgan. God damn it, Liv Morgan is the WWE's hawk too girl. Oh my god! Holy hell! Oh my god! I knew I had a feeling what you were gonna send me. I had a feeling what you were doing. <laughs> Holy fucking so, I, 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 I'd say that Damien's gonna re- retain. I, I don't see what way to get there. What way to get there? I mean, I, I think he'd be the better <laughs> opponent against uh, Gunther than than Seth was. For those watching live, I know our stream on Facebook went down, but we're on YouTube, so if people are watching this. This is how our show goes normally. This is how, yeah, things, yeah. This is how things are normally on this we, show. We go off on different tangents. Um, oh, and I do appreciate um Logan Paul doing the huck too in the middle of a match. <laughs> by the way, I want to make a note. We do have a comment on um YouTube um from our from the MJF um. MJF thing earlier. He said the heel turn was interesting from um, Dare to Dream. It could be on YouTube. So, hello, welcome. Thank you for watching. Yeah, um, thank you for that. Anyway, it's much very rare we have people actually watching this. So, there you go. Very cool. Thank you for that. And one person. Oh, oh, so the show. That, we don't that, know who they are. So, that, that brings our total number of viewers to a high total of what? Uh, 15? One. <laughs> one. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, uh, a holiday. Just... it's a holiday. It's a holiday. Holy crap. <laughs> It's a holiday. Um, 